uh, let us uh, discuss about refrigeration cycles and the psychrometrics, uh, air conditioning systems in this uh, introduction to all these topics in this video. Uh, see let us uh, look uh, the overview of the VTU syllabus on module number 4 uh, that is uh, prescribed by Vishwasari Technological University Belagami. So, this is the refrigeration cycle syllabus. So, wherein so we are supposed to study about uh, vapor compression refrigeration uh, uh, system, its a description analysis uh, as well as uh, thermal analysis and refrigeration effect calculations. So, then again uh, capacity, power required, unit of uh, refrigeration, COP, refrigerant and their desirable properties, uh, alternate uh, refrigerants uh, we are supposed to study in this uh, module. So, after that the another part of this module is uh, uh, air cycle refrigeration. So, air cycle refrigeration we are supposed to study uh, wherein we will be studying about the reversed Carnot cycle. So, reverse Carnot cycle then uh, reversed uh, Brayton cycle. So, Brayton cycle uh, in uh, gas power cycles. So, we have already studied uh, here uh, the same Brayton cycle it is uh, executed in the reverse manner. So, after that uh, vapor absorption refrigeration system. So, this is the syllabus uh, prescribed for refrigeration cycles in on VTU. So, another part of uh, the same module is psychrometrics and air conditioning systems. So, psychrometrics wherein we are uh, able to, it is the science of uh, studying the conditioning of air according to uh, requirements. So, wherein we will be controlling the humidity, temperature uh, and other parameters of the air for uh, uh, different requirements. So, wherein uh, we will be studying about uh, psychrometrics uh, uh, properties of air psychrometric chart. So, will be introduced and uh, air conditioning processes heating, cooling, dehumidification, humidification all these processes we will be studying and few numericals we are will be able to uh, solve on this. So, this is the overview of the module number 4. So, out of this uh, uh, let us uh, look into first uh, the refrigeration cycles. So, wherein refrigeration cycles we will uh, start with vapor compression uh, refrigeration uh, then uh, all uh, terminologies involved in that then uh, air cycle refrigeration uh, uh, is uh, prescribed in this uh, module. So, wherein uh, we will be st uh, starting with the introduction and we will proceed with the same syllabus. So, here uh, let me start with refrigeration. What is refrigeration we already know. So, most of us we have used uh, the refrigerator uh, in our household and we have seen in hotels, uh, restaurants and uh, in uh, uh, food storages and uh, where many places we have seen refrigerator being used. So, this is one of the application that uh, we can see. So, almost uh, refrigeration is required to preserve the food for longer time. So, after that uh, ice uh, for producing the ice. So, refrigeration is required. So, then uh, again for uh, preserving uh, for longer time the cold drinks and all uh, we can uh, preserve for a longer time. So, this is uh, where we can uh, look into shops. So, then again air conditioning uh, so also includes refrigeration cycle in it. So, here uh, applications of refrigeration different applications of refrigeration we we'll look into first uh, refrigeration cycles are used in uh, air conditioning uh, applications. So, then again for food storage as we saw for making ice ice cream plants so refrigeration is required then again industrial applications many industrial applications we list in the next slide. So, then uh, hospital uh, operation theatres research laboratories then again computer rooms for maintaining the temperature. So, then again uh, production of rocket fuels um, cryogenics. So, wherein temperature uh, to be maintained uh, at a very uh, lower temperatures than the atmospheric such as minus uh, 150 degrees Celsius uh, temperature is to be maintained. So, there also refrigeration find uh, very very uh, importance. So, then again cryogenic projects. So, we use. So, these are the different uh, uh, images which shows wherein we use the refrigeration at the bottom of this slide. So, then uh, again uh, applications we continue. So, these are the few industrial applications wherein uh, food industries for processing the food items. Then again uh, farm crops temperature wherever temperature is to be maintained for processing farm crops it is also required then textile printing works. So, we know the currency notes. 
so to for printing them we need to maintain the temperature uh, at the required uh, desired temperature so to reduce that temperature we use the refrigeration cycles then again uh, 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 treatment of uh, blast furnaces in industries so then uh, uh, processing of tobacco petroleum products chemical products requires a uh, refrigeration so then again preservation of perishable goods so we know manufacturing of ice ice cream factories if you visit uh, so we find uh, refrigerators are being used so then again freezing uh, chilling storage transportation of food stuffs so we have a uh, different for preserving juices fruits so preservation of uh, photographic films documents so we use uh, Uh, refrigeration uh, cycles then again providing comfortable environment refrigeration cycles are also used for providing comfortable environment so we know that uh, uh, this is used for uh, large uh, uh, air conditioning systems so uh, in factories so to maintain the temperature required temperature then again comfort uh, air conditioning in hospitals then again uh, restaurants uh, then theaters offices so wherever we go we find uh, large uh, air conditioning systems so these are the few applications of uh, air conditioning systems so then again terminology is involved in the refrigeration so here what is refrigeration refrigeration it is defined as the process of reducing and maintaining the temperature of one substance or space we can say space means for example let us say our classroom so classroom itself if i want to temperate decrease the temperature below atmospheric temperature so refrigeration is to be used so it is defined as it is a process of reducing the room temperature or substance temperature well below the atmospheric temperature or surrounding temperature this is called as refrigeration so now uh, here uh, uh, the device uh, what device we use uh, for reducing the temperature is refrigerator the device or machine used for refrigeration is called as a refrigerator so this word uh, please remember so then again refrigerant what is refrigerant the device uh, refrigerator uses a working fluid inside it so that working fluid we call it as a refrigerant okay so this is the uh, what the refrigerant so if i draw a schematic diagram for a refrigerator so refrigerator uh, uh, so uses the work input so work input in the form of electrical energy so in our home uh, in uh, kitchens we find uh, refrigerators so wherein we supply the electrical uh, power to the refrigerator so that is uh, in the form of work input we are supplying so that electrical energy inside the refrigerator goes inside and gets converted into mechanical energy so that mechanical energy is in turn used by the refrigerator for uh, decreasing temperature below the atmospheric temperature so this is work input so this is the refrigerator so wherein uh, the uh, uh, the temperature of this cold space is to be maintained well below the atmospheric so to decrease the temperature of any space or substance we must always remove the heat energy so we know that uh, this from the thermal sciences so the amount of heat to be uh, is to be removed from this cold space so if q is the uh, quantity of heat uh, removed from this so that we have to decrease this temperature below the atmospheric if atmospheric temperature is let us say 25 degrees celsius if i want to maintain the temperature of this cold space by 20 degrees celsius so i need to remove heat out of this so that is the uh, heat is to be removed so then again uh, here uh, that's uh, once uh, heat is absorbed from this cold space it is to be rejected into atmosphere so i need to reject it into atmosphere so this is the quantity of uh, heat uh, rejected there so therefore uh, by default uh, heat rejected uh, will be equal to heat rejected will be equal to what uh, q heat absorbed heat absorbed from the cold space plus uh, the work input to the compressor so this is quite uh, common so we can conclude on this so then again uh, here uh, there are many components of uh, refrigerator means uh, the parts with which the refrigerator is built so refrigeration any refrigeration system common refrigeration system so that we use in our house it uh, mainly consists of uh, the one uh, compressor to compress the refrigerant or to make it to flow inside the refrigerator uh, second one is condenser so condenser uh, condenses the evaporated refrigerant refrigerant because uh, the refrigerant undergoes evaporation evaporation means the change of phase from uh, liquid to gaseous phase after absorbing the heat from the refrigerated space or cold space 
so that uh, refrigerant need to be condensed back again that is the requirement of refrigeration cycle so for condensing that we use condenser so then again evaporator evaporator uh, evaporates the refrigerant liquid by absorbing heat from the refrigerated space so expansion device there is expansion device to maintain the uh, pressure of the refrigerant in the evaporator so we'll understand what is the function of each device in the coming slides so next uh, so this is the whatever we are observing so this is uh, the actual uh, image of the compressor that we see on the slide so this is uh, the condenser this is the condenser condenser is nothing but it's a tube and surrounding to that uh, we have uh, the fins to transfer the heat into atmosphere so inside the tube refrigerant is flowing so this is a condenser so then again uh, and this is the expansion wall that uh, we, are, we are able to see on the screen this is the expansion wall expansion wall so which expands the uh, refrigerant and this is the evaporator this is the evaporator so just uh, uh, coils are there heat coils are there so which are surrounded by uh, the space or substance to be cooled so all these are uh, connected through pipelines uh, see in the in this uh, format it's a cycle refrigeration cycle it is so here uh, uh, this is the refrigerated space whose temperature is to be reduced so from this refrigerated space i need to absorb heat energy to cool it below the atmospheric so this uh, absorption is done by evaporator coils and uh, inside the evaporator uh, there is a refrigerant uh, so which absorbs heat energy so after absorbing heat energy it changes its phase so as we know so when uh, we heat the water uh, above 100 degrees celsius it gets evaporated so similar phenomena takes place here evaporation temperature of refrigerant is very very low so uh, below the atmospheric temperature so it gets evaporated at that temperature the, then the vaporized refrigerant at uh, state one comes out enters the compressor so the compressor it's a reciprocating compressor so which compresses the uh, refrigerant uh, vapor uh, to higher pressure or it uh, makes the refrigerant to, to move through this circuit so as it is uh, compressed its temperature increases so again uh, this is the work input that we gave in the compressor then the refrigerant uh, after absorbing q uh, amount of heat energy then again w amount of work uh, in, uh, from the compressor refrigerant then comes into condenser so wherein it rejects the heat energy wherein it rejects the heat energy into atmosphere so then comes out at state 3 so then uh, the pressure is very very high so since the compressor has compressed it its temperature its compressor has uh, pressure compression pressure has has been very very high so uh, if pressure is very very high we know that uh, the refrigerant liquid moves at very faster rate so it may not uh, have a sufficient time to absorb heat in the evaporator so to decrease its speed to decrease its speed so we expand it in a device called as expansion wall so where pressure is reduced so that the refrigerant starts moving very slowly okay inside the evaporator tubes so that it is it has a sufficient time to absorb heat energy from the refrigerated space so then again uh, uh, the refrigerant enters back into evaporator so in the liquid form again it absorbs the cycle continues so such cycle we call it as a refrigeration cycle so this is a recapture of the basics uh, that you have studied in uh, elements of mechanical engineering or diploma guys uh, might have been also studied uh, in your diploma it's just a recapture so here uh, terminology is related to uh, refrigeration first one is refrigeration effect the refrigeration effect is it is the amount of energy removed per unit time from the refrigerated space also called as capacity of refrigerator so amount of heat removed is kilojoules or joules okay so per minute per second uh, that uh, uh, is called as refrigeration effect that is heat absorbed from the refrigerated space so this uh, in this diagram this is called as refrigeration effect so i am writing in short re this is refrigeration effect means quantity of heat absorbed from the refrigerated space per unit time by the evaporator so that is called as uh, the 
refrigeration effect okay so we denote it by q so some books uh, denote it as qa because it is a quantity of heat absorbed some books denote it as q1 so let's not bother about the suffixes so refrigeration effect is quantity of heat absorbed that is q so i am writing at this moment so then again coefficient of performance coefficient of performance is it is uh, defined as the ratio of refrigeration effect to the work input refrigeration effect to the work input so here the this uh, q q this value divided by w so that is refri uh, refrigeration effect divided by work input to the uh, refrigerator this is called as cop so this is also a recapture so you already know this so here uh, coefficient of performance so then coefficient of performance is uh, nothing but uh, heat extracted in the evaporator uh, to the work input work input uh, to the compressor that we are supplying this is called as uh, coefficient of performance so coefficient of performance uh, we can also write it as uh, so as you know heat extracted in the evaporator can be written as refrigeration effect and work input i have written as it is so this is the final uh, 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 point uh, we can remember coefficient of performance is equal to refrigeration effect upon work input so now uh, here uh, mathematically we can write uh, cop as q upon w so please remember this so here uh, refrigeration capacity coming to the next uh, point that we are uh, discussing that is capacity of a refrigerating machine are expressed by cooling capacity cooling uh, capacity the standard uh, unit used for expressing the capacity of uh, refrigerating machine is ton of refrigeration so this is a very very important unit that uh, we must remember for uh, further discussions ton of refrigeration capacity of a refrigerating machine is always expressed as a ton of refrigeration it is a unit so we should remember it so next uh, one ton of refrigeration so it is defined as the quantity of heat abstracted that is it is nothing but refrigeration effect uh, from whom we have to remove quantity of heat abstracted to freeze one ton of water into one ton of ice means i i have a one ton of water at 0 degree celsius so i want to convert uh, that water in liquid phase into the solid phase that is ice phase so that is uh, how much is the quantity of that water one ton it is okay so uh, i want to freeze it uh, into the solid ice in a duration of 24 hours in a duration of 24 hours so now uh, we know the uh, enthalpy of uh, evaporation for uh, the water that is uh, 334.5 kJ per kg uh, uh, latent heat of evaporation so if i multiply that for uh, one uh, american ton one american ton and uh, use the duration 24 hours so i'll be getting uh, one ton of refrigeration as equivalent of uh, 3.5 kilo watt that is 3.5 kilojoule of heat is to be removed in 1 second for a duration of 24 hours that is called as 1 ton of uh, refrigeration or i have to remove 210 kilojoules of heat energy in 1 minute for a duration of 24 hours so that uh, uh, unit is called as 1 ton of refrigeration so we need to remember so this uh, unit very very important unit for solving the problems next we have uh, one more terminology that is ice making capacity it is the ability of the refrigerator to make ice starting from water at room temperature so please remember the definition sometimes they will ask in the exam so then again uh, relative cop so that is uh, coefficient of performance of the refrigerator uh, relative cop it is defined as the ratio of actual cop of the refrigerator to the theoretical cop so the difference between actual cop and theoretical cop so we'll understand while uh, uh, discussing the further topics so how the re actual refrigeration cycle and theoretical refrigeration cycle differs so learning outcomes so from this module so we'll be able to uh, understand vapor compression refrigeration so that is the first uh, outcome that we can say second one is so we'll analyze thermodynamically Uh, the vapor compression uh, refrigerators 
so wherein so we'll be uh, able to sketch the schematic uh, as well as uh, temperature entropy diagrams for the refrigeration cycle of uh, vcr so then again evaluating the property data uh, at principal states of the system so means at the compressor inlet compressor outlet then again condenser outlet so what are the properties of the refrigerant so we'll be able to evaluate that is while solving the numericals you will understand this so then again applying mass energy entropy balances for the basic processes so mass energy entropy balances that is sfw so each device in this cycle that is we saw that is compressor condenser then again uh, expansion wall evaporator so all these devices can be considered as steady flow energy devices and we can apply mass and energy balances for those devices so then again uh, determining uh, refrigeration system performance that is coefficient of performance for the vcr so then again uh, we'll also uh, discuss in this module about the effects uh, of uh, vcr on the performance of key parameters means we change uh, few parameters in the vcr then we uh, study the effects as we studied in the vapor power cycles the effect of uh, boiler pressure condenser pressure superheating we discussed this. in the same way we study here also of course uh, vapor compression uh, that is refrigeration cycle it is nothing but reversed rankine cycle it is nothing but reversed rankine cycle because uh, here also the working fluid uh, changes its uh, phase alternatively from liquid to vapor vapor to liquid so as we saw in the vapor power cycles then again uh, demonstrate understanding the operating principles of gas refrigeration so we will study about uh, in uh, syllabus we saw so we will be able to study about the air refrigeration cycle also so wherein we will be studying uh, reversal breton cycle reversal carnot cycle then we perform thermodynamic analysis of uh, gas refrigeration cycle that is a uh, reverse carnot cycle as well as reverse uh, bar breton cycle so then uh, we'll study about uh, refrigeration that is uh, how does it work thermodynamically so now we know uh, from the thermodynamics uh, about the uh, reservoirs thermal reservoirs source sink work input heat rejection heat absorption so all uh, from the basic thermodynamics we know a refrigerator can be uh, uh, represented with a block diagram so this is the block diagram of the refrigerator so wherein uh, the refrigerated space can be called as a uh, low temperature reservoir and the atmosphere can be called as a high temperature reservoir so i need to uh, remove the heat energy Uh, from the refrigerated space that is low temperature reservoir and reject it into high temperature reservoir so for that uh, i use a, a device called as a refrigerator the refrigerator absorbs heat energy from the refrigerated space and with the help of work input and it rejects the heat uh, into uh, high temperature uh, reservoir this is the understanding of uh, block diagram so now uh, what is there inside a refrigerator so we have already understood so there is a compressor okay so the from uh, compressor it is entering to condenser so condenser so from condenser from condenser it goes to condenser and from condenser uh, it goes to expansion wall this is the expansion wall from expansion wall it enters evaporator so wherein uh, from evaporator again it comes back to compressor so this is the these are the components so the purpose this purpose is achieved with the help of uh, this block diagram is achieved practically with the help of uh, all these uh, components so next uh, this is the block diagram again uh, revised block diagram we can say so wherein uh, we can represent the refrigerator see here this is about the refrigerated uh, uh, refrigerator working and this is about the working of uh, heat pump so here refrigerator so refrigerator 
components we have indicated here. So, as you know this is compressor and again uh, we have condenser this is uh, expansion device this is evaporator. So, evaporator absorbs QA. So, please note down here Q1 or QA is the quantity of heat absorbed and uh, from the refrigerated space that is a refrigerator. So, then again from here it is rejecting Q2 amount of heat energy. So, I am using the notation Q suffix R R Q2. So, different books use different notation it uh, rejects uh, Q R or Q 2 into uh, warm environment that is atmosphere, but it takes uh, work input uh, W compressor takes work input W heat pump working. So, here it uh, always uh, pumps heat from the cold uh, environment but with work input into the warm uh, uh, space. So, it uh, happens in cold countries. So, heat pumps are more widely used there. So, where in outside temperature is very very low. So, we need uh, heat inside the room. So, where we can engage a heat pump. So, heat pump is uh, uh, out of uh, scope of our discussion at present. So, here uh, again uh, this is the refrigerator inside the refrigerator how the evaporator coils then again uh, freezer compartment where evaporator coils freezer compartment is there this is the compressor these are condenser coils. So, and uh, all are arranged inside a refrigerator this is for your uh, information. So, then uh, COP as we know coefficient of performance desired effect. So, desired effect that is nothing but cooling effect in the refrigerated space divided by required input that is work input with that we are supplying to the compressor that is Q upon W is the expression for uh, COP. <coughs> so, relative COP. So, whenever we operate this cycle that is a refrigeration cycle uh, theoretically. So, we can calculate the theoretical COP and when uh, we operate the same cycle with actual conditions that is with losses considered. So, then uh, we will be able to calculate the COP. Uh, that COP is called as actual COP. The, the ratio of uh, actual COP to the theoretical COP. So, we define it uh, with a term called as relative COP. So, please remember that point. So, now uh, coming to the next. So, what is the COP and uh, how to calculate it? Let us look into a simple uh, problem uh, statement. So, find the COP of uh, refrigeration system, refrigeration system. So, if work input is 80 kilojoule per kg means uh, I am supplying uh, 80 kilojoules of uh, mechanical work uh, to for compressing 1 kg of refrigerant inside a refrigerator and again uh, refrigeration effect it is producing for me is 160 kilojoule per kg. So, it is absorbing 160 kilojoule of uh, heat energy from the refrigerated space whenever 1 kg of refrigerant is flowing inside. So, as we know uh, from the definition of COP, so it is nothing but heat absorbed divided by work input. So, heat uh, uh, work in uh, heat absorbed is 160 kilojoule per kg, work input is 80 kilojoule per kg. So, therefore, uh, 160 upon 80 the answer is uh, COP is calculated as 2. So, please uh, it is a, a problem is very very simple, but we need to understand uh, what is COP and how to calculate it. So, this it was just a theory. So, with this problem you will have more clarity. So, please remember the uh, COP. Now, uh, let us uh, discuss about the syllabus, our syllabus that is uh, air cycle refrigeration, uh, wherein first we will understand about uh, reversed Carnot cycle, then uh, reverse uh, Breton cycle we will study means uh, first I am discussing about air cycle refrigeration only instead of uh, vapor compression refrigeration. First we will understand these concepts. So, then we will move to vapor compression refrigeration because the disadvantages of air cycle refrigeration is the outcome of uh, vapor compression refrigeration. So, first we will study these then we will proceed with that. So, first uh, let us understand about uh, reversed Carnot cycle. 
so that is a reversed carnot cycle for the refrigeration so wherein uh, this is the schematic diagram of uh, uh, reversed uh, carnot cycle that we, we are supposed to study so for conducting the experiment on reversed carnot cycle so we have uh, we require four important devices for refrigeration we already know first one is compressor so second one is condenser third one is turbine for the reversed carnot cycle so then again uh, we need evaporator so this uh, and again uh, this is the cold uh, environment and this is the warm environment where we need to reject the heat energy so cold environment is to be maintained at t1 temperature that is uh, uh, cold space uh, temperature t1 temperature and warm temperature uh, warm space temperature is t2 so that is atmospheric temperature is t2 so atmospheric temperature is almost uh, constant as we know so it is t2 and uh, ref refrigerated space temperature also we know that uh, <coughs> refrigerated space temperature also we know that uh, uh, it is uh, we set in the refrigerator so that is substance are to be maintained at uh, 4 degree celsius 8 degree celsius there is a setting inside the refrigerator so almost it is also constant so let me take it as a t1 temperature so now here so as you know the refrigerant uh, is is the working fluid which is used in the refrigeration cycle so in this uh, uh, refrigeration cycle so we are using air as a working fluid air or it can be also be called as a gas okay so air is used as a working fluid here so let's understand about the working uh, principle of reversed carnot cycle initially the air at state 1 enters the compressor initially at uh, state 1 enters the compressor so what is the function of the compressor compressor compresses the air or increases the pressure so whenever pressure is more air starts moving at very high speed so the compressed air uh, comes out of uh, this compressor at state 2 then it enters the uh, next device called as condenser so what is the function of the condenser the function of the condenser is to reject the heat energy into atmosphere so it rejects heat energy qr into atmosphere so then again the air gets cooled the cooled air at state 3 then comes into turbine but the pressure is very very high because it was compressed in the compressor so to decrease its uh, pressure it is made to expand inside this turbine so under inside the turbine always the working fluid undergoes expansion we know that so it expands then comes out at state 4 so then uh, again it enters the evaporator so inside the evaporator as its temperature is low it uh, absorbs heat energy qa slash q1 i have written it's not qa by q1 qa or q1 so any one notation you can follow okay so it absorbs q1 amount of heat energy from this refrigerated space again gets evaporated or its temperature gets increased so then comes out at state one so thus we completed the one cycle so this cycle uh, if i execute in this way with these components such a cycle is called as reversed carnot cycle so it is exactly reversed to heat engine carnot cycle uh, working so hence we call it as reversed carnot cycle so these are the components and the schematic diagram for the reversed carnot cycle so here uh, let's uh, understand about uh, the next uh, discussion on this uh, slide so first uh, as i told refrigerant used uh, in this uh, uh, schematic diagram is air or gas the one to two process how i am compressing isentropic means i am compressing it isentropically isentropically means reversible adiabatic way adiabatic means what There's no heat transfer from the compressor body okay and it is reversible process no losses at all completely with 100 percent efficiency the compressor is working so that is one to two is isentropic compression process so this is uh, one to two is isentropic compression process so we have written the process name here so next uh, two to three is isothermal compression so i am compressing uh, the air at constant temperature in the refrigerator uh, in the condenser in the condenser so that is isothermal uh, compression takes place at constant temperature so what is uh, condenser uh, function 
so the temperature inside a condenser is always maintained constant so why temperature is maintained constant inside a condenser because it's a condensation process condensation process is it's a phase change process that is from vapor state to liquid state but actually here uh, since air is not liquefied here but here the condenser used is just to decrease its temperature just to decrease its temperature but it is carried out at constant uh, temperature he only heat is rejected heat is rejected at uh, constant uh, temperature so because of that uh, there is a sm slight uh, uh, compression kind of phenomena happening inside the condenser so that's the reason uh, uh, two to process two to three is isothermal compression process so then again the three to four is isentropic expansion process so as i told uh, in the schematic diagram inside the turbine it is uh, the air is undergoing expansion so why expansion is required uh, to reduce its speed of uh, uh, flow the flow uh, rate of the air because if it moves it with higher speeds inside the evaporator it will not be able to absorb uh, heat energy from the refrigerated space so to decrease its uh, speed so we expand it inside the turbine in the reverse carnot cycle so that is 3 to 4 is isentropic expansion process so here uh, next process is 4 to 1 that is isothermal uh, expansion so that is 4 to 1 is evaporation process evaporation process is the uh, it is nothing but uh, just uh, for here uh, the air evaporates that is uh, actually in the inside this carnot uh, reversed carnot cycle there is no uh, any evaporation kind of phenomena happening so uh, since it is air so simply the air at lower temperature absorbs heat energy that is q1 energy from the refrigerated space then uh, it expands so that's the reason but it the phenomena takes place at constant temperature inside the uh, evaporator between 4 to 1 process so that's the reason i am calling it as uh, uh, isothermal expansion so this is the fourth uh, process name that we can remember so let's uh, uh, represent the schematic diagram on a pressure volume uh, diagram so here 1 to 2 so 1 to 2 is isentropic uh, compression happening inside the compressor so inside the compressor uh, volume reduces pressure increases so this is represented with a 1 to 2 process name there so 1 to 2 process so then again uh, 2 to 3 is uh, isothermal uh, compression uh, isothermal compression so wherein uh, we have uh, temperature is maintained constant but uh, since compression is happening volume has reduced and pressure has also increased so 2 to 3 we are representing but uh, we are uh, operating this uh, cycle in a reverse order so then again uh, 3 to 4 3 to 4 is expansion so expansion during expansion volume must increase pressure must decrease so this is 3 to 4 process that we have represented so then again 4 to 1 is again uh, isothermal expansion expansion further it expands air expands here so expansion means volume should increase pressure must decrease so 4 to 1 process we have represented so one thing we need to remember is heat is absorbed into the cycle during 4 to 1 and heat is rejected during uh, uh, 2 to 3 from the condenser so this is how uh, we draw the pv diagram for reverse to carnot cycle so then again uh, coming to the next diagram that is temperature entropy diagram very very important diagram that uh, we should uh, remember so here temperature entropy diagram uh, so as uh, we consider the working fluid undergoes phase uh, changes so there is a vapor dome just for uh, our reference we have drawn it so now here uh, we initiate uh, 1 to 2 process so as 1 to 2 is isentropic compression process isentropic means uh, at in compressor inlet the air is at state 1 and at compressor outlet air is at state 2 so we uh, represent this process uh, 1 to 2 so as entropy has to remain constant during uh, the compression there is a increase in the temperature from t1 to uh, t2 so i move upward 
so that is the constant entropy line is a vertical line on the ts diagram so this is where uh, i have written s1 is equal to s2 so that is uh, first process we represent and second process is uh, 2 to 3 process 2 to 3 process is isothermal isothermal means temperature is equal to constant constant temperature line is a horizontal line on ts diagram so that is 2 to 3 process so wherein uh, entropy is uh, uh, reduced uh, temperature remains constant so then again 3 to 4 process 3 to 4 process is isentropic uh, expansion isentropic expansion so as it undergoes expansion uh, inside the turbine temperature reduces from uh, t2 to t1 so but isentropically uh, a isentropic line that is a constant entropy line on ts diagram is a vertical line that is s1 is equal, s3 is equal to s4 so then again uh, it comes out at uh, state 4 so from state 4 again it enters the evaporator and uh, its uh, temperature is maintained constant inside the evaporator but entropy increases because of heat addition that is q1 amount of heat is absorbed in this cycle that is q1 is absorbed q1 or qa so q1 is absorbed here so from uh, between 4 and 1 so then the cycle uh, repeats so the please note down the uh, this is t1 is uh, evaporator temperature t2 is uh, the condenser uh, temperature so thus the cycle completes the ts diagram the same ts diagram can be represented in this way so wherein 1 to 2 is isentropic process so that wherein uh, we have s1 is equal to s2 so point 2 i am projecting on the x axis and i am writing it as a 2 dash here i am writing it as a 2 dash and a 2 to 3 process that is condensation process 3 to 4 that is expansion so 4 to 1 again it is uh, evaporation process so 3 to 4 uh, here i have s3 is equal to s4 since it is isentropic process i can write it as a s3 is equal to s4 and point 3 i have projected it uh, on the x axis as a 3 dash so i'll zoom it for you just to observe this so here uh, from this diagram uh, we can conclude that uh, the constant uh, temperature process 2 to 3 so wherein temperature is uh, t2 is equal to t3 we can write so then again uh, one more constant temperature process that is isothermal process t1 is equal to uh, t4 so here uh, we have uh, these uh, entropies s1 is equal to s2 and again s3 is equal to s4 we can remember so then again uh, we can do thermal analysis of this reversed Carnot cycle. So I hope you have uh, understood the processes then again uh, PV diagram, TS diagram, schematic diagram about the reversed Carnot cycle. So we will do the thermal analysis of this. So here uh, uh, the same TS diagram we will use for our discussion and this TS diagram we have understood uh, in the previous slide. So this is uh, the analysis that we can do uh, from this uh, slide so first uh, uh, our intention is to calculate the cop for the reverse the carnot cycle so cop is uh, that is uh, heat uh, absorbed from the refrigerated space divided by work input to the compressor so wherein uh, uh, q1 upon q1 upon uh, or qa is heat absorbed qa or q1 as i have told and heat rejected is qr that is work done so how we have written this so work done is equal to qr minus qa so that is uh, you know for any refrigerator so input is uh, uh, q1 here so that is q1 is uh, input here or qa is input here and uh, it uh, takes w as a work then it rejects qr so w is equal to uh, heat rejected minus uh, heat absorbed that is QA. So the same thing uh, is substituted here. 
so here uh, means our job is to calculate the values for qa qr and uh, substitute in the cop formula uh, from the referring to the ts diagram so first uh, let's uh, look into qa that is heat absorbed so it is happening uh, uh, during the process uh, 4 to 1 inside the process 4 to 1 so as you know heat is absorbed uh, during the process 4 to 1 from the previous discussion always so that is uh, how to calculate the heat absorbed so heat is absorbed that is qa is absorbed uh, during the process uh, 4 to 1 so heat absorbed uh, uh, on a TS diagram, we know it is the area enclosed below that process and y axis. So, I need to calculate uh, this area that is uh, 4, 1, 4, 1, 4, 1, 2 dash, 3 dash. This area I need to calculate. So, the same thing is written here. So, wherein the temperature uh, during this process is T4. So, temperature is T4, T4. And again, uh, the how to calculate the how to calculate the area of this uh, rectangle? So it is this height into this width. So this width is S1 minus S4. This width is S1 minus S4. The same uh, uh, equation that is T4 into S1 minus S4 is included uh, for that. Then, uh, as you know, uh, entropies are equal here. So I can replace S1 by S2, and again uh, S4 by S3. So, replacing those terms in the next step, so we can uh, write uh, T4 into uh, S1 is replaced with S2 and S4 is replaced with S3. So, and again, you know uh, T4 can be replaced with uh, T1, uh, T1 temperature that is uh, evaporator temperature. So, I am replace uh, T4 by uh, T1. Uh, final expression I made is T1 into S2 minus uh, S3. So, this is the heat uh, absorbed during the process uh, uh, 4 to 1. So, then again uh, work done during the cycle per kg of uh, air that we are uh, circulating. That is uh, work done as we discussed just now, it is nothing but heat rejected minus heat absorbed. So, that is QR minus QA or you can also write it as Q1 minus Q2 in some textbooks. So, then again uh, that is nothing but QR is happening that is heat rejection is happening between the process 2 to 3. So, here uh, QR is happening QR or it can also be written as Q2. Okay. So, that is happening in the process 2 to 3. So, then QA we have already discussed. So, QR is happening. Uh, uh, heat rejection is happening during the process 2 to 3. So, QR is heat rejection is happening during the process 2 to 3. So, heat rejected QR is nothing but the area enclosed on the TS diagram between 2 to 3 line and the x axis. This is the complete area heat rejection is happening. So, the uh, expression how to calculate the area this temperature that is the height of this rectangle into the change in and width that is S2 minus S3. So, therefore, heat rejection expression can be written as heat rejection expression can be written as uh, QR is equal to uh, the height is T2 or T3 into S2 minus S3. So, the same expression that we can uh, include in our uh, discussion that is T2 into T2 into S2 minus S3, T2 into S2 minus S3 we have written. Minus heat rejection we have already uh, derived the expression for that I am using the same T1 into S2 minus S3. So, wherein when I compare both these uh, terms S2 minus S3, S2 minus S3 is common. So, if I take that one common, it is T2 uh, minus T1 into S2 minus S3. So, this is about the work input. So, then uh, coefficient of performance of the system that we know, coefficient of performance of refrigeration system for uh, reverse uh, Rankine cycle. So, that is heat absorbed upon work done, that is QA upon QR minus QA. 
so that is uh, q4 to 1 uh, q2 to 3 q4 to 1 now we have the expression for all these and if you substitute in the next step so i'll be able to uh, write this as uh, he qa t1 into s2 minus s3 then again uh, heat uh, rejection so we have already found the expression uh, the not sorry so that is work input expression we have already uh, discussed that is t2 into t1 so wherein uh, s2 minus s3 s2 minus s3 i will cancel the final expression for cop is t1 upon t2 minus t1 so this is the uh, expression for uh, thermal efficiency of uh, reversed uh, carnot cycle so this is just for understanding so the, uh, this will not appear in your exam but uh, you need to understand so how a basic uh, refrigeration cycle uh, works let's have a quick revision on uh, reverse carnot cycle so we understood so how the uh, schematic arrangement is made for uh, conducting the experiment on uh, reverse carnot cycle so then we understood uh, the pv diagram how to draw the pv diagram for that uh, reverse carnot cycle then we understood the ts diagram how to draw it and uh, why it is to be constructed in this way only so then we listed the processes involved in the reverse carnot cycle so then we derived the expression uh, for uh, cop that is uh, uh, coefficient of performance for uh, reverse uh, carnot cycle so this is uh, the derivation that we discussed referring to the ts diagram that we had drawn so then the final expression is uh, uh, this is the final expression that we understood that is t1 divided by t2 minus t1 so where t1 is the evaporator temperature and t2 is the condenser temperature hope you have understood the reverse de carnot cycle and its thermal analysis now let's discuss a numerical on this that is a machine working on reverse de carnot cycle operates between 305 kelvin and 260 kelvin so if you look into these values only so what is the evaporator temperature evaporator temperature is the lower one that is 260 kelvin and the higher one is condenser temperature that is 305 kelvin so hence we can according to our discussion on the reverse de carnot cycle so we can write t1 as 260 kelvin and t2 as 305 kelvin so we need to determine the cop that is coefficient of performance when it is operated as a refrigerating machine so we'll strike out this heat pump and heat engine so now here so as per our discussion so t2 is written as 305 kelvin only why because it's a higher temperature condenser temperature is always high inside a refrigerator and again t1 is 260 kelvin so lower one so the cop as we have already derived the expression cop for a reverse de carnot cycle is t1 upon t2 minus t1 so we know t1 t2 substitute in this 260 divided by 305 minus 260 so cop of reverse de carnot cycle we calculated it as a 5.78 so please remember this problem it's a very simple problem just for your understanding of reverse de carnot cycle so i have chosen it now uh, as you know uh, reversed carnot cycle it's a ideal cycle because all the processes involved in the reversed carnot cycle are uh, ideal processes so these are all ideal processes involved in it uh, it is not uh, practicable so we cannot run this cycle uh, in our household refrigerator so hence uh, what are the disadvantages uh, limitations of this uh, carnot cycle let's uh, look into limitations now disadvantages so first disadvantage is all the processes present in the reverse de carnot cycle are uh, reversible processes means uh, all devices that is compressor turbine condenser then uh, evaporator all these devices should work for 100% efficiency there should not be any losses no, losses at all so because of that reason uh, it is not uh, uh, practically possible to run this cycle so then again uh, 
it is not possible to add or reject the heat at constant temperature so constant adding heat energy in the evaporator at a constant temperature is a difficult process and again inside the condenser also so as we saw in the ts diagram so 2 to 3 is a horizontal line and 4 to 1 is a horizontal line so those those are practically not possible so then again uh, process 4 to 1 harms the turbine so 4 to 1 is expansion process so wherein uh, inside the evaporator the refrigerant is required to move at slower rate so because of that reason turbine is rotating so i am obstructing uh, turbine rotation so hence uh, it may harm the turbine blades so that is one more uh, limitation of this then again uh, high running costs so the running costs of this cycle are very very high because uh, we need to maintain uh, uh, reversibility in each process so after that uh, large size size is very very large uh, we need to uh, for obtaining the required parameters operating parameters of the cycle so we need to build the uh, large sized turbines as well as uh, condensers evaporators and compressors so then cop is uh, very very low since performance is uh, uh, low so these are the disadvantages of uh, this reversed uh, uh, carnot cycle so i thank you for attending this lecture so what all we discussed in this lecture so we started with uh, refrigeration definition and we discussed about various uh, parameters of refrigeration that is uh, definitions uh, cop actual cop theoretical cop then uh, relative cop definitions we discussed refrigeration effect definition unit of refrigeration we discussed after that uh, we uh, look into the module outcomes expected outcomes after uh, module outcomes we discussed about uh, the components of uh, refrigerator what is a refrigerator what is refrigerant uh, then uh, we understood uh, the schematic diagram of uh, household refrigerator so how it works what are the components involved in that that was all a revision for you so then again uh, after that we started with uh, air uh, refrigeration cycle so wherein uh, we had planned to discuss uh, a reversed carnot uh, cycle that is a theoretical cycle after that reversed breton cycle and uh, we discussed uh, about uh, the schematic diagram of reversed carnot cycle its pv diagram ts diagram as well as uh, its uh, thermal analysis finally we derived the expression for cop of reversed carnot cycle so then uh, we solved uh, a numerical on reversed carnot cycle and we discussed about uh, the disadvantages of uh, or limitations of uh, reversed carnot cycle so wherein uh, it gave the ideas for further development of uh, uh, refrigeration uh, cycle so we'll discuss uh, in the uh, next uh, video about the further concepts uh, uh, for any clarifications uh, please feel free to contact me uh, thank you for watching